people would look at you mm. and from the outside think he's not got a care in the world. That boy is having a laugh and, yeah. you know, you're, you're pirouetting through life. Yeah. But that's your way you cope, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's really the the other side of me i mean that is my release from the side where i'm at home in a black hole yeah. you know not knowing what to do not being able to go out not being able to speak um not being able to to work sometimes you know because i'm so deep in this hole anxiety i've had all my life yeah. so that i learned to live with and i could mask that by if i felt unsafe in a situation i'd you know think right i've got to go home now you know couldn't go in supermarkets couldn't go in lifts couldn't go in airplanes you know agoraphobia claustrophobia i mean the only phobia i didn't have was homophobia darling you know it's like <laughs> you know i mean i can joke about it but literally you know it created yeah. so many phobias but i'd always had that so i lived with that sure. but when my mum passed four years ago um, it was quite a shock. I got to a point where I was in a constant state of fight, a constant state of anxiety, that feeling of when you're about to do something and you feel that rush. Mm. I was constantly like that. And it got me, I, I just didn't know what to do. And then I got so down with it. I got to a point where I wasn't speaking. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to go out. I mean, I, I couldn't care if my husband left. You know, I didn't care about any of my family because I was so consumed with trying to live and deal with this feeling of being so deep in a hole. And I watched a programme yesterday with Carol and, uh, you know, I could empathise with... You know, I, I, I said to a psychiatrist, you know, I've never, I've never wanted to kill myself. Mm. You know, I've never wanted to do that. But I thought sometimes it'd be easier if I wasn't here. I understand. And, yeah. you know, what the psychiatrist said to me was, well, actually, that's the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's... When you're there, it's, it's like I have everything, but I have nothing. Right. I was so empty and I felt so alone and didn't know how to get out of this hole and couldn't. In my head, I could speak to myself and tell myself, you know, you know it's all right, this, you, know, you can get through this. But then I think, I don't want to get through this. I've just had enough of this. You know, and I'd wake up in the mornings. I live in the country. I've got a beautiful house. I wake up and I see the sun shining. And when I wake up in the mornings and the sun's shining and it doesn't make me happy, then I just know there's something... I knew there was something more. I started to take medication a year and a half ago, which has um, made my cup half full. OK, You I know, understand. like I say, the anxiety I can deal with, it was the depression. It was very different. And, you know, speaking about it and having men speak about it is a really important thing. And I was watching the show yesterday as well. I was watching Piers Morgan. And, you know, normally I'd never bother, you know, saying, but he really incensed me by saying man up because it's men like him or fathers like him which aren't giving the opportunity for people to open up and say, look, I'm suffering with depression. I don't know what this is. If someone says man up, then what they're going to do is they're going to go back and think, I have to man up. Yeah. And then those people are the ones who could be the statistics of suicide. You know, so I appreciate everyone has an opinion. Mm. But the fact is, you know, this week is about mental health and it's not about sensationalising something. No, it's so This we is can about talk. people's lives. It's about talking. You know, talking. this is about talking. And it's, it's really important that we talk and that, you know... I'm in the public eye. People in the public eye are talking this week because we know that we can get the message out through our social media sure. and, and in this way. You know, it's not that people suffer any differently who aren't in the public eye. You know, I've had nothing and I have everything. But, but it's the just fact when, is... when people talk, when people like you talk, people, and, and Carol yesterday, yeah. Yeah. you know, we've talked about this, haven't we, Hilary? Mm -hmm. The fact that people say, well, if it can happen to them... Absolutely. It can happen to anyone and actually you don't feel as alone. If you're sitting watching, you don't feel yeah. as alone, Absolutely. do you? Absolutely. Louis, thank you for sharing all that. Really important, very it's, powerful really messages is, there. Really is. And, and you know what? People think that, that having a mental illness or talking about it is, is a weakness. It's absolutely not. It's, it's not, the opposite. It's a strength. It's, it really it's a strength is. to it's be so able to brave. talk about it's it. So brave. Um, and, and men being the strongest uh, sex, absolute rubbish. We're not. Absolutely not. Because if you look at the stats, three oh, quarters horrifying. of suicides horrifying. occur in men. And it's the biggest cause of death in men under the age of 35. Staggering stats. Mm. And although men are, are three times more at risk of alcohol-related illness as a result of, uh, of anxiety, of anxiety and depression, and depression yeah, exactly. uh, than, than women... Um, and whilst they have exactly the same problems as women, they, they're much less likely to access help yeah. than, than women because they think they've been told by 
<laughs> others to man up, w yeah, yeah. which is not the but answer. But it's not helpful. It's just not helpful no, at all. No, absolutely. So, so look for the signs in other people. Mm. You know, we can all help other people. If, if, if they're becoming withdrawn, yes. if they're indulging in escapist behaviour, smoking, drinking, if their behaviour and their personality is changed, if they can't find any enjoyment in life, if they're always focused on the negative, talk to them. Encourage them to open up. Mm. Put your arm around their shoulder and say, I've felt like that before. Yeah. Look at all the famous people, Winston Churchill, Stephen Fry, I Frank know. Bruno, I know. really successful people. Louis, you know, it can affect anybody. Talking is the first step, and then there is help out there with cognitive behavioural therapy, self-help, lifestyle yeah. changes, we're getting much better. We are. But there is always help, and if you, the first GP doesn't help you, go to someone who cares. Well, that's what Lou yeah. did, which is brilliant. Thank you so You're much welcome. for coming in. I really appreciate it, and it was great you talking to those men too yeah. and seeing how they suffer and that, and that thing Yeah, because man up definitely won't work for me, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you. Yeah, you it, too. it really is. It is. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed.